Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. After successfully restarting the computer and uh, pulling up the Optimus Configurator tool for Mac OS X, it was able to recognize the keyboard and map everything. Oh, I'm sorry, it fell asleep. It, you know, it goes into power saving mode as I've, I've configured it. Uh, right now I'm going to show you something that's really interesting. Uh, when I hold down the shift key, watch, can you see what's happening to the letters or the numbers on the top? They're actually changing to their equivalents when you press shift. Isn't that kind of nice? Or let's say you're, you're, you're thinking to yourself, Chris, geez, I can barely see that font. Okay, fine. You, you, really, you really want me to, to make it just, just a little bigger, just, just a little bigger for you? Because I can do that, you know, if I wanted to. So I can go between a smaller point size and a larger point size instantaneously. I can change to a bold if I wanted to. And that's like the entire keyboard. So if I go in and let's see here, let me focus in on the, let's go to the Z character. So we're going to go into this character and I'm going to increase the font size to 80. So that's a little too large there for that font, uh, but I can set it bold or not. So now I can do this independently for each key if I wanted to. Uh, I'd imagine that there's a way to do it for the entire keyboard. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm, I'm adjusting the entire keyboard. Uh, let's see, that looks good. Nice and bright. And actually, let's make it bold. But I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, uh, you know what? I, I don't like Lucida Grande. I'm more of uh, an impact kind of person. Okay, fine, so let's change the font to impact. You don't like impact? You're more Helvetica? Okay, fine, we're going Helvetica. What, okay, you want Georgia, fine. You, any font that you have installed on your system, you can set the keyboard to. Now again, the keys that were redone at that point were the ones that just the regular the lowercase keys. Uh, now I haven't even gone into programming the control buttons on the side yet or even the function keys across the top. Um, I would hope to find other keyboard layouts that people had done work before me, be nice. Oh, and I know you're thinking, well, Chris, what if uh, I wanted the text to actually be, like, red? Okay, fine. Uh, what if you want it blue? Okay. Uh, you can change to any color in the spectrum. There's a pink. I don't know if you're able to detect that from that angle. Actually, let's go really deep. Let's go yellow. Look at that. There's some pink right there in the middle. Purple. Purple blue. Actually, it is closer to blue purple anything really I mean I can change anything and if I just wanted to let's say uh, just go in and, and, and change that Z color I could do that so now my just my Z is red and the rest is is uh, yellow and of course I can go and reset it if I wanted to go back to the defaults and be fine so uh, yeah it's uh, going to be a lot a lot a lot of fun I'm really looking forward to importing other people's creations, uh, you know, and really kind of stylizing it uh, for my own likes and needs and wants. Oh, and here's here's the neat thing too: if you're someone who uh, you know is is getting started with a Mac and you're not familiar with which button is the command button, that's the command button right there. So you made it nice and big, and see that's the symbol they use. Or I can change that to an Apple logo. I can change it to any picture really. Oh, that it should say command. If let me shrink it a bit, there it says command now. Uh, we'll go back to that one. And I've set the timeout. That's the reason why it's it's falling asleep, which is fine by me. You know, normally I'm not going to need to see the keyboard unless I need to use it. Uh, it is, uh, for all intents and purposes, very, very nice. Wow. I uh, am absolutely in love with this keyboard. Uh, looking very much forward to diving into the software, importing other people's uh, layouts, uh, you know, designing my own pictures, uh, for any particular key on the uh, on the keyboard, and if I go in and choose, let me actually I think I can give this a shot. I'm going to try to do this live. Hey Chris. Yes, cat. Cat. Yes. Several of your chatters are asking if that keyboard is multi-language supported. Ah uh, yes, it's it's any language supported. Truly, it's any language supported. Uh, what I'm going to do right now, uh, if I can figure out, I'm going to open it up in Paintbrush. Um, I'm going to edit 
a key here, or at least try to. Um, let me open the tool. There's the pencil tool. Let me change it to red. I'm going to try to edit uh, this key live, or at least attempt to live. Okay, and then save it. It's actually saved as a TIFF file. So if I hit then command save, in theory, right here, I should be able to turn on the layer. Look at that. I just drew that. It's a TIFF file. The template is actually a TIFF file, a template that saved as a new layer. So if I go in, it's, it's just amazing. So now if I edit and go with blue and make a, let me try making a kind of like a blue happy face right below it. It's probably going to fall asleep. So let me hit space bar again and hit save. Look at that. Instantaneous. Instantaneous. This layout is not individual pieces. Uh, like I said, it's a single TIFF file. So you, any any of you illustrators out there, want to create like a cool layout with you know either you know just you know the side widget things, and then of course I could go in and program a function to that key. I mean that that's kind of important too. Uh, oh, it's got some presets as well. In fact, I can make that the Mac logo up that up there. So I just made that the Mac Happy Face logo, and then I can make the second one below it. Uh, I can program it. I can make that like uh, an alarm clock. I can, you know, go over to another key and choose, let's see here, I can choose an animation, let's try an animation here, supported formats, either an animated GIF or a MOV, uh, so let's try, hmm, do I have any movies saved anywhere? I wish I kind of would have prepared for this a little more. I don't know if I have any animated GIFs either. At least offhand. But anyway, I can I can add an animation with ease. I can add the just a date and time. So now I've just changed that. I've changed this. It says Tuesday 12. Oh, analog or digital. So now I've set it to the digital uh, with ease. I can use flash separators. A 12-hour clock, AM, PM, uh, local time, or or any other city. So I can set another one down here as a world clock if I want to. Right there on the keyboard as a function. Uh, any string of text. Uh, set it to the sound volume. Oh, here, you, all you geeks are going to love this. Did you see that? Can you see this right here? This one that I just created? Uh, that's my processor temperature right now. I've got Fahrenheit or Celsius. It'll do either one. All right, uh, storage space on any drive that's uh, mounted, either a diagram, pie chart, or uh, text. Uh, memory usage. Oh, you're going to love this. Uptime. Look at that. System uptime now. Of course, I just restarted the computer, so you know, just started. Uh, network speed, which is really, really nice, and I can set uh, you know any one of them, including uh, any any of my uh, network cards. Uh, a random generator, completely random. So now it's just a, all it does is just spits back random whatever numbers. <laughs> uh, Gmail, so I can set it with a login and password for Gmail, and it'll tell me uh, when I have new Gmail waiting for me right here. Uh, and I can do this with any one of the keys on the Optimus Maximus. Uh, the default actions, uh, you know, executing a shell command, toggling a layer, key sequence, expose in spaces, opening a file, typing text, executing Apple script, opening a website, iTunes control, volume control, a custom alert box. The list kind of goes on and on and on. Uh, this, again, is the Optimus Maximus keyboard available right now from thinkgeek.com. Um, they're the people that finally made it possible after years of waiting for me to have this and I'll be bringing it around with me to uh, local events here in the Seattle area I, I think that's about as far as it's going to travel um, so uh, you're welcome to see it you know anytime I, I you know happen to be in the neighborhood as, as you or the same neighborhood maybe you're coming to Gnome Dex too my upcoming conference here in a, another <laughs> pardon me week or so uh, you'll be able to see this thing up close and personal yeah it's kind of nice isn't it I love it my email address is chris at perillo.com, and I may even program that in right there. So all I have to do is just, well, why would I program a button to email me? That's kind of stupid. Well, so am I, but I love hardware. I'm stupid for hardware. Uh, you, you can find me playing with hardware, <clears throat> my hardware at least, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week in conjunction with this chat room uh, that is pretty much open all the time. Uh, I'm streaming this live video out over the internet, uh, one place and one place alone right now. It's going to about 900 people. 900 people are watching me play with my keyboard. 
Let me tell you, it's probably more exciting for me than it is for you, but uh, you could live vicariously for now. Just, just go ahead and order one already. You know you want to. You know you want to. Dude, you saw what I was doing over here. You want to do it. And thinkgeek.com is the place to get it done. And if you want to see the live video and join the chat room, you're welcome to stop by 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.